Hi, welcome to Data Engineering and today we are going to discuss about uh, connecting Spark with MySQL or any other RDBMS through JDBC. So by default, uh, uh, we used to connect Spark with Hive and Spark internally uses the Thrift server to connect with Hive. And uh, there is some use cases even in Spark with Hive, you can connect with JDBC also. So by default, you can use the Thrift. Spark internally uses the Thrift to connect with Hive. But still, there are some use cases where we still used to connect Spark with Hive via JDBC also, but I will tell that in a different video because you can ask me a question like uh, if Thrift is what internally used by Spark to connect Hive, then should I have to use JDBC to connect MySQL or Oracle? So you may get this question. So so for this, I will give you an answer in a different uh, uh, video. Uh, for now, like uh, uh, like we are going to just see uh, how to connect Spark with MySQL or Oracle through JDBC. So you can, I will tell you some use cases as well. So in real time, we all always used to get some uh, requirement like this as well because most of the source systems have been not migrated the source databases has been not migrated because that is kind of a critical thing which to do actually all live events are captured in the current uh, uh, traditional rdbms only so here what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, uh, replace the transformation part so we imagine i will tell you a use case there, there was a mysql database and uh, data has been getting stored over there and uh, people use some traditional tech stack like informatica or abin issue to do the etl stuff when i say etl extract transform load so etl is all about you transforming some data so you do some joins and generate a report right that is a, again a, we call it as an etl which you can do with informatica and abinatio they are some traditional technologies so now the plan is i want to remove this informatica and abinatio from the system and i have to replace that with spark so that means still MySQL is a source, Oracle is a source. I don't want to change that. What I want to change is to, to change the transforming part, which is Informatica and Abinatio or Informatica. Let's keep only Informatica. I want to re replace Informatica with Spark, but the source is still Oracle. So in that case, you have to write all the transformation, what they have written already in Informatica. You have to, re you have to rewrite that in Spark, okay, with the programming or like codings and SQLs, those stuff. So in this case, you have to connect Spark with Oracle to read the data first. So that, that is the use case. And when I say uh, this RDBMS or Hive is not only the source for Spark, also this destination. So you write some output of Spark to some Hive tables, or even we write output of Spark to some RDBMS or NoSQLs. So whenever I say it's like for both read and write. So here in my case, MySQL is a source system. In some other cases, MySQL will write the target tables, target data to a MySQL SQL database again. Okay, fine. So both source and target could be MySQL or source could be MySQL or target could be Hive, source could be MySQL, target could be NoSQL, right? It depends. Fine. So here I will tell you like how to do that first. So here you have to uh, download uh, MySQL connector jar from internet, which will be available. And then you have to invoke Spark Shell. So I'm I'm going to show you with Spark Shell. You want to write this as a code, as an application in IntelliJ or Eclipse. Yeah, you can you can do it very well by now, right? So Spark Shell, iPhone, iPhone jar, I'm adding MySQL connector. Because of adding this jar only, I could able to connect my MySQL or else I won't, uh, I can't, right? So if it is Oracle, then you have to can download Oracle connector so there will be a separate connector jar for each rdbms for jdbc okay so you have to use this command enter and now you have to do a setup in mysql as well so for installing mysql there is a command sudo apt iphen get install i'm sorry so this is ubuntu i'm the linux what i'm using is ubuntu apt iphen get install mysql iphen server okay this is a command to install your mysql uh, database and then you have to set your username and password so if you have already watched my hive video how to install hive video i have explained how to do this mysql setup okay so once you install this you have to log into mysql so mysql iphen u root and iphen p my pass my username is root so iphen use for username and then iphen p which ask for which will ask for uh, password root is my password so I have entered into my MySQL. Now I'll give show databases. So I have already created a database as test you can see here or else you can use command create database, database name and you can create your own database. So I'm gonna change my database now, test. Okay, now show tables. So I have a table called uh, T1, so I'll do a describe here. So I, I have two columns, uh, serial number and P name. Serial number is an integer column, P name is a bar care column select star from t1 so i just have one record so one comma gautam that's it so with respect to my sql things are done so back to uh, thing so here here now i'm 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 going to show you how to do this so if you see here 
so i have a like i have val data frame mysql equal to spark dot read dot format jdbc so uh, because the format what i'm going to use is jdbc and if you have like uh, uh, if you are using spark version greater than 2 it is going to be spark uh, because sometimes people used to go for sql context so that is not required because when you start your spark it says like uh, spark session is available as spark which includes hive session sql session and everything so you don't want to have sql context so just you give spark dot read dot format jdbc and we do have some options in which we used to pass all the db information so first thing you have to pass your mysql uh, host name which is local host you have to give jdbc colon mysql local host and then the database name test and then driver name so com dot mysql dot jdbc driver for each and every database there will be a driver name if it is oracle it will be different db2 it will be different for mysql it is the driver name is same and then option db table uh, that is like table name so this db table is a syntax okay so this is a key the value is the table name t1 so here you have to change your table name and then username is root password of my mysql is root so let me run this okay so if i run this uh, like yeah so you can see here it is it is it is able to read my data because i can able to see the data types of the table now what i'll do i will just do a show of this enter now you can see one comma gautam i can able to see the data but the problem with the jdbc with spark right it used to launch only one uh, worker one thread so that means there won't be any parallelism so that means this is not recommended to use in real time that is how people used to think but there is no other go when the source is an rdbms we do we used to do only with jdbc so how to do this in an optimum way like how can we increase the parallelism and how can we do the partition based reading and all those stuff so here i have introduced few other options like you can see after this password you can see i have added something called partition column number of partitions lower bound and then upper bound so that is what i have other uh, definitions are here i will tell you partition column is similar to like we do we use partition columns in hive right so why we use partition column so that is when when we do a uh, read uh, select with the var condition of the partition column the the query performance will be high the read time will be get reduced right that is why we use the partition and the partition column what you are preferring here it's supposed to be numeric data or timestamp so if, for example here if you see the partition column and i'm giving serial number so instead if i give p name so p name is actually a var care if you see here it's var care but if i give p name i'll be getting an error saying that the name of the column should be numeric date or timestamp type that will be used as partition you will be getting this as your error statement okay so make sure you are using this type of data type based columns and then low, lower bound and upper bound is something like uh, for the partition column we are deciding the range of data needs to be get read by the select query by the read operation right so i'll explain you more on this so lower bound or upper bound is based we used to give some range for the partition to be get created and the data should be get uh, distributed while doing the read for for each partition okay so here the number of partition how to decide okay i'll explain you the lower bound and upper bound in some like in just in next two minutes I'll, i'm going to explain you okay number of partition so deciding number of partition is again like based on the volume and other stuff you have to decide so and one more thing like uh, since here it, it is two different tech stack right so you have to involve the uh, oracle or team or mysql team from whichever you are going to read so it's not like you are deciding some partitions on your own and then because you don't know what is like how uh, in oracle it happens and the how threads happens in oracle or mysql you are not aware of it may or may not but we'll go for worst case now imagine you decide something uh, like uh, uh, like five partitions you are deciding and then like uh, spark is not able to read and then like your source team will blame you see spark couldn't read it so you have to do something with spark or you should not blame oracle team or mysql team saying that so it's not like blaming each other we have to sit together the person one person from oracle team and one person from the spark team should sit together and you have to decide you have to discuss like how uh, this works like if i do a read operation how it works because end of day for that oracle or mysql guy so you you, you don't want to mention him like we are going to read with spark or something like just tell him i'm going to i'm going to read via jdbc that's it so because like if a jdbc call comes how much partition will be good for this particular table ask him so he will be having some idea because they used to suggest this for many other teams for different jdbc calls so jdbc is not only for spark right even you write a normal java code or python code you can do jdbc right so you just check with them just do a group work and that is what the reality answer i can give you okay fine so here number of partition we are deciding as 10 now 
now there is a uh, like formula like how internally based on the lower bound upper bound and the number of partition that we have given based on how internally the data will be get distributed as a partition range so there is a formula internally that spark used to consider so the formula is upper bound divided by number of partitions so here the lower bound i have given as zero and upper bound i have given as thousand so it's based on the i'm, I'm deciding the range on which the data can be get distributed so that that is what this thousand is all about okay if you see here like uh, uh, 1000 divided by 10 minus 0 divided by 10. So 0 is lower bound. So 0 divided by 10 equal to 100. So we call this as partition strides, the range. So that means like we have 100 as a range between uh, partitions. So internally Spark used to have consider uh, Spark internally use this kind of inquiry understanding only. So select star from table name where partition column between 0 and 100. So the 0 and 100 is not the value within that partition column. That is very important. It's not a value. I'm not denoting the value of that column. It's a range of that partition column. Okay. So don't consider this a value when I use the word between like a SQL query. Don't confuse like that. So now it will consider this 10 partition. Uh, it will create 10 partition 10, 10 SQL statement like this and the partition stride the range will be 100 like 0 to 100 100 to 200 200 to 300 300 to 400 so it will be like that till 900 to 1000 so you can increase the range like by increasing the upper bound but it's all trial and error you have to work out actually so you have to do a POC and make sure like based on what bound we give the, the performance is getting increased so that is something you have to decide actually so now uh, uh, there is one more called predicate so if you use predicates you don't want to use any of the above thing just use only predicates but if you are not using predicates then please go for these four options the four options are partition column number of partitions lower bound upper bound so if you are you gonna use predicates you don't want to use those four so what is this predicates so predicates it's like uh, you can um, you can the option uh, what you are you are giving right so here dot option directly you can use the word predicate and then within the value you have to give the where condition state so whatever you use to give in where condition so where field name or where uh, a date column greater than 2021 a year column greater than 2021 directly you have to give the where condition like a condition statement so each condition statement uh, you give with the predicate is actually a partition so that is what it explains a list of condition in which in in the var class each one defines one partition so for example if i give year to year greater than 2021 it's actually it, it considers that as a partition okay and then what else so the remaining database connection informations like uh, username password url and those stuff so let me run this as well just to show you like there won't be any syntax issues I, i'm gonna run this so I'm going to run this all this upper bound, lower bound, partition column, and then uh, uh, number of partitions. So now I'm going to run the same show thing. I, I'm getting the output. So since I don't have the huge volume of data, I'm having less volume. I was not able to show you the internal mechanism, how it happens. Maybe I will try to make it in some other video, but this will work for sure because JDBC uh, connecting Spark is a, actually a, a hard task for us to prove them. The performance will be really good, but then there will be some tweaks that you have to do because you have to change the lower bound, upper bound and number of partitions uh, frequently. Um, not much frequently based on the volume of data that increase, you have to change. Even in the Spark, again, num partition has to be get changed when even we are reading it from high yeah it's all same right so it, this is how something that we can do uh, when we are reading oracle or mysql so i hope you like this video thanks for watching and if you really like this video please do subscribe to my channel and follow this your friends and colleagues if you want to get the complete course big data course not only spark like it starts from what is big data to hdf skype and everything you want to see the complete list of videos i have shared the playlist link in the description box of this video where you can get the complete list and uh, yes uh, so if you really like this please do share this in your linkedin and thanks for watching